All right, we're gonna do this. We're gonna play Hercules. We're gonna Falcon. An, un an unnamed prominent advisor at that. All right. So one thing that I do think is interesting about Hercules from a move deck perspective. Because I, I always try to talk about making changes to decks that aim to solve problems, right? Hercules does very potentially solve a direct problem that this archetype has always had, which is when you, excuse me, move multiple payoffs to a cloak path, it's awkward that all your stats are in one place. So, if Hercules is playable, and again, that's still, I want to make it clear that that's still an if. It's not clear that that's the case. Um, one of the things he could be doing that's very positive is making it so your multiple cards ending up in one spot come together and then you kick one of them out while one of them stays. Unfortunately, that's the Thanos deck playing Mobius on curve against me, so I'm probably torched in the literal sense. It will spike, uh, Ghost Spider for this Vulture and be okay, but... What if I do this, and I just don't play for the center? Was Ed's 10 on the right? I think this is a good shot. Oh, it only adds 8 on the right, actually. Sorry, I did the thing where I didn't subtract the two I was moving. They played two cards though, hopefully this is enough. He got got by a Mockingbird, I guess. Cool. Victory. It's Human Torch Tribunal. It's definitely been a thing people have done in the past. It just makes you a little bit all in and it gives you a card that's not great when you're not making a big Human Torch.
It's sad not to have an iron fist to bounce, but definitely want to uh want to draw some cards here given the option. get punched by Iron Fist and then next turn I can Hercules plus Miles and then next turn I could go Dagger, Ghost Spider at middle, ideally hit it here plus Falcon They can't shake me everywhere, says Increasingly Nervous Man for the third time this year. Their Jeff has not moved yet. I think I'm willing to go minus four in the middle for plus three on the right. I think is a good plan. Pig left. So I'm aware that the pig is bigger on the right. But they're already Shadow King or Shagging here, possibly, so I think it's I think it's this. I could be right to put the Falcon on the left, honestly. Do we die to Shag Shadow King here? Yeah, probably. I haven't actually counted it, but Shang on the right puts them to 12, and that'll also be it. No, I'm only at 11. Falcon right beats Shadow King there, though. Joe's wrong, bud. Victory. And that wasn't really a read. Opponent just, like, messed up. They should always shadow. Shadow King deletes the dagger anyways and sets her to a zero. So the opponent was just wrong. I was just, I was just hoping they didn't have Shang and Shadow King because the odds of having both of those cards are less than seventy five percent. It's closer to a coin flip. I I was assuming we were dead if they had both of them, but thankfully they just messed up. So this is a little thing, but you should never play Human Torch on one in this spot, and the reason is this. If we draw Iron Fist, our curve will be Iron Fist Human Torch into Ghost Spider Human Torch plus Beast. And playing this out early prevents that. And playing this out early doesn't enable any other sequencing. So it is just strictly wrong in my deck with these cards 
to lead on lead on this on one. Should never, 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 ever do it. And now we'll do this. So that way, if I draw a Nico or an Iron Fist next turn, I can Nico or Iron Fist plus Beast to get them all back zero. Just strictly wrong is my wrestling name. God bless. That's, that's one of those things, like, people always ask you, how do you get better at Snap? And that's one of those types of things you need to be able to do to get better at the game, is think about, okay, how are my future turns structured, and how am I spending spending my energy on those future turns? And does it make sense to do, do what I'm doing here? <sighs> Speaking of things that make sense, do I want a Nocturne now, so I have the option to get rid of London? London's not great for our deck. I think I think I want the option to get rid of it. Don't get spider. I mean, if we get hammed, we get hammed. That's Nico on destroy draw mode. Yikes. Say it's best to think one turn ahead. I think locking yourself into hard and fast rules about how many turns you're supposed to think ahead is a really good way to lose games of Marvel Snap. I think it is not remotely as simple as I think X or Y turns ahead. This is going to let them draw cards, but I don't really want to bounce my second Nocturne, I don't think. We'll play Dagger out here last because we're bouncing Ghost Spider and Human Torch. And then the Nico that got Gladiator is going to destroy this, so we'll fill our hand here. I don't think I want to turn off Asgard. I think it's likely they only play one card, and then Asgard only gives them plus one card, and I don't really want to beast my Nocturne back to my hand. They ended up playing two, which is sad. They get my Iron Fist now. God, that's extra sad. I think this is correct. Oh, right. And they have my cloak with their cable. Ugh. are going to Dr. Octopus the negative zone, yeah? So I think it's this, so that way the negative zone doesn't fill. It'll pull my six plus my miles, and then we can Nocturne into the center to potentially be able to contest it. I'm gonna end up with a uh, ghost spider and human torch back in my hands. Cool. Yes, actually great for us. Good job, bud. Yeah, the, them having priority is huge here. We game, game winning. Future. Game winning. actually don't have enough to contest the center, huh? Plus 10 on me there.
We do have priority into tech cards too. I think the play to win light here is this. Wait, what was the last card that I played? It was Falcon, yeah? Oh, it was Pig. It was Pig, you're right. I guess this is the play to win line. They're gonna Shadow King left and then we hope that this is enough to beat it. That's funny that DC. Victory. I think Ghost Spider does highlight it, yeah. Okay, I can check that next time, but I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure you're right that she highlights it. Chilling. Dialogue. It's not a name you hear very often anymore. I'm gonna tee Hercules up in case we draw a move enabler or Nico rolls move right. Okay, Living Tribunal here from the opponent. Meaning this Nocturne's gonna be important for potentially getting rid of Limbo. JK, LOL. They have an O4, they do have an O4, Mr. Negative, that's true. All of my ongoings are belong to you. <laughs> Gotta get the non-gold card off the board, Jet. That one's not remotely socially acceptable. we do this and then with Nico drawing we should no be able to control what Hercules does next turn pretty cleanly oh I forgot Valley of the Hand was gonna happen oh yeah I totally I totally should have Nico the Iron Fist so I could have that queued up that's a good catch I didn't, I didn't think about that. Missed it.
they can trick me at all. Yeah. I don't think I don't think I can reasonably use Hercules this turn. I think it's just this. here with Ghost Spider and Dagger. The mystery intrigues me. Yeah, they were they were playing for the gambit of I I just don't contest the left. Mr. Positive, yep. vibing for now. I could be right to play into the raft though. I think at this point we're doing this. Snap. We'll snap them. They've done nothing so far. A falcon a dagger. Actually, let's do this in the other order. So that way, if we spike, um, we spike ghost spider. Where do they magic chat? Where do they where do they magic? I need to I need to knock turn somewhere they're not magicking. You think they magic the left? I guess they're most likely to magic in a spot where they've already put something.
Uh, is that pretty solid turn six? Hey, Sam, you got five in a row in you? Let's find out. point out that that was a matchup of Nocturne immediately paying dividends. And this is, I think this goes back to talking about making changes to decks that work to actively solve problems that those archetypes have. Um... Uh... One of the biggest issues move decks have is actually not even their own stat lines or cards. It's simply just location variants. There are so many random locations that are so bad for move decks that I, I, I think Nocturne's not optional if you want to play this archetype. I have I have some other some other builds of this deck that, that I want to try today that don't have Nocturne in them, I'm definitely going to be editing them to include Nocturne after playing this set. Actually, it looks like we need to roll some ads. Let's go ahead and do that. We're going to play a few more with this when we get back, and then we're going to move on to our next deck in the morning. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out. Don't go anywhere. A war machine was never going to be good enough for move decks. It just costs way too much energy. You can't play it out proactively. remotely left-leaning who says they're not voting for Biden. I'm just linking them John Oliver's last week tonight talking about Project 2025 and if that detailed breakdown isn't enough, I'm honestly just like moving on. I'm just like, I can't. If this isn't enough, nothing I can say will be enough. Papa Pros, thank you for the 18 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. chat for people. Alright, how to say 
One last thing about the debate slash Biden, and then I'm gonna start aggressively removing people from chat talking about it, because I really just don't want to be mad and bogged down by it all day. All I'm going to say is, if you go and look at the things the Biden administration has actually done, they have accomplished a lot of very good progressive things. They passed a ton of good infrastructure things for the crumbling, failing infrastructure in many parts of this country. They've crushed an incredible amount of student loan debt, despite the Supreme Court not letting them get rid of all of it outright. They've had a ton of really good climate initiatives, more than any other president in history. And I think there is way too much Biden's just the less bad choice and too many people that are completely ignorant and don't understand all of the things he's actually done that are actively good. And if you want a couple other handfuls that hit on social issues, he restored a number of protections through executive a actions and decisions in various government agencies at the federal level that ensure protections for LGBTQ folks and trans folks in a lot of, a lot of different ways. The, tr the Trump administration rolled back an Obama an Obama era rule that made it that allowed it to be legal to discriminate for healthcare providers against people based on their their sexual orientation. So I think there's way too much that gets caught up in saying Biden's just less bad, and people don't actually look at anything that's actually happened and looked at reality of what's past. And I think there are a number of actively good things that you can be happy about while also acknowledging that there are bad things that should be done better. But just complete, don't just completely write off and discount the actual good things that are happened. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna time out and remove, remove um, any talk about politics for the rest of the stream. If you wanna talk about politics and you're a sub and you wanna chat with like-minded individuals, pop on into the Discord server. There's a politics channel in there that's super active. It's been extra active since last night. I'm sure it'll continue to be more active, but I just, I don't want to be mad. I don't want to be mad and sad. I'll do that on my own time. I'll play some, I'll play some Hercules. I'll check out some other stuff. Well, I'll move it along. Gold conquest I just joined, right? I almost auto stepped them back, but I don't know that I want to play best of one. I guess I do have a lot of gold tickets. My hand's not very good though. My hand's only okay. I'm gonna stay, but we'll just uh we'll wait and see. Hats! Thank you for the 73 buds. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Zen Grief coming in hot with the 51. Good morning, good morning. Smart Alec, thank you for the 14 months. I think I am daggering and then we're like Ghost Spider Cloaking next turn potentially. do on these. I think it's actually this. So I can end dagger here. Gives them less options to move around to. this so that way next turn if I draw 
beast. We can pick these up in the center. Cornering, etc., etc. Yes, Red Guardian is generally a pretty stock card in the Loki next to agree with that. I just didn't have other things to do on Curve. It didn't really make sense to put Dagger into the Ninja Path. Or did it, actually? That's actually a really good thought. I was going to Ghost Spider here and Cloak here. So it was actually free to play the Dagger into the Ninja Path. Yeah, I actually just messed up. I could have played around that Red Guardian. I just didn't. It was actually 100% a free roll to play play my card into the. Turn giving them plus four feels bad, bad. All systems go. Yeah, my dagger. My dagger should be huge and bounce to my hand right now, and she's not because I messed up. How has been a player on Red Guardian? Because there is a ninja there that would have taken the hit from the Red Guardian. Do I want to keep them honest in the middle? No, they're definitely playing everywhere, right? I don't need to keep them honest there. We'll stay. This might be loose. Yeah, fuck it. Lose by one. This lost was 100% on me. I, I could have played around. What's it called? I chose not to. It, was, I, it wasn't even on my radar. I wasn't thinking about it. I would have. I would have played this in the center, and then I could have done that, right? I think what you mean is nerf Loki. Yes. I could, I could take a second and be reflective of my play and think of what I could have done better and should have done better, or I could complain that Loki's overpowered. There are definitely the two choices there. Okay, well, this means I'm going to start playing into Vibranium Mines. Wait, did it just run out of time on me? I thought I undid my end turn. Did I miss undoing my end turn? I don't know that I intended to stay there. Awkward. Oh, they're moving the doctor though, so this is fine. Hey chat, look at this. A chance to learn from my mistake. It's exciting.
Where do we think they're more likely to play? This is one of those spots where it's awkward that I, I need priority going into the last turn so they don't take my... I need priority going into the last turn so they don't take my, uh, my what's it called here? Go away. Ending on Spider-Man. Oh, yeah, ending on Spider-Man's wrong in case I drew go Spider. We didn't draw her, so it doesn't matter, but... You're correct that that was wrong. I guess this, yeah? Gives me 10 on the left. It gives me a big dagger on the right. It gives me a 9 power vulture for 17 to the middle. You think it's a retreat? I think you're super wrong. I don't. I think I don't want to be four to ten, and I think I have a good shot to win. Loki players never leave when I boomers at them. They have Loki and Quinjet chat. They think they can't lose. They think they're God. My body's ready to die to top deck shouldn't she here. Lucky players never leave. Victory. I mean, like I said, I think I think retreating there is super wrong. I think we are very reasonably favored with the position that we had. Also, like, and this is, I think this is something enough people hadn't considered. Cloak plus dagger winning the game is a canon event. Ben Brode's gonna make sure it happens as frequently as possible. So, like, calm, calm down, please. Remember, chat, they Loki'd and Jeff's deck is full of mediocre cards. Wow. How dare you say something so brave yet so true. First off, how dare you. I think the Beast plus Nico roll is stat worthy here. I'm going to get these three back to my hand plus another Beast. Oh, we killed their Loki too. Honestly, chat, I think killing their Loki is bad for us because I think we're more likely to lose the game to their tech cards than we are to them loki I us. I, mean, I think them playing Loki is actually a trap and now the game has forced them not to fall into it. if what I'm doing is actually good or if I'm just lost in the sauce. Maybe the answer is yes.
Oh, I'm cutting myself off of a draw here. I should have played the cloak out. Or the Nico, one of the two. I definitely shouldn't have bricked a drop. Watch this turn that I'm currently executing and telling me and tell me you don't love this deck and it isn't just absolutely insane. Are you, are you watching the same game of Marvel Snap? I'm watching you snapped me. Are you freaking kidding me? Do you see the disrespect from this video gamer? They they think they're ahead. I'm about to get Mobius. Wow. I hope you're ready to get timed out if that happens. Why would you, why would you put that energy into the air? You're about to get Mobius. That's rude. Sandman from Agent Coulson incoming. I'm so glad the rest of you didn't say those things before it happened. Just a, just a devil dinosaur. Yep, got me. Oh my gosh, and I drew the iron fist I wanted for Christmas. I drew the iron fist I wanted for Christmas. And Nico rolled move right. I actually can't leverage Nico's roll right here, so. Uh, what's the play? So we, we go spider here. And then we Iron Fist, the Humid Torch into the center to crush them there. And then, actually, what if I do this? And like Nico over into here? This, pl this plays for all three pretty clean. Oh, that blocks the human torch. You're right. I can do this, though. Yeah, this is fine. No, it doesn't block the human torch. The vulture's moving. The, vul the vulture's moving before the torch happens. Vulture's going left. It's probably still right to do this here. It's probably better to hedge 13. I'm going to have 34 in the middle, and the devil dinosaur's getting smaller. This is fine. I think we weren't blocking the human torch ever. My sequencing was correct because I have a, I have a golden god. But... It is, it is worth noting that uh, I should probably hedge the left here. I love, I love the fucking taste of casserole in the morning chat. Says local man about to get savaged by his own, by his own nocturne. Nobody panic! It was just an excess jump scare. Nope, nobody panic. I wasn't panicking, you were panicking. God, she's such a chaotic, chaotic lass. Embrace, embrace the chaos. I didn't pucker, you puckered, chat. That, that small little clench before you, before you, before it auto calculates for you. Sorry, I'm not distracted by my editor showing me something sweet that he's cooking.
Does my editor watch the stream? They do. Your relationship with Nocturne is the epitome of toxic. What? A move, mirror match, chat. And the hater said it couldn't be done. Actually, Hercules is kind of awkward in the move mirror, huh? We don't have, uh, we don't have priority. We go, I think we're going to get a little weird. I think I believe in, I know what they're doing. They don't know what we're doing. Our start's bad. Escaped. I'm playing a move deck because they just buffed a bunch of move cards, but then I queued into someone else also playing a move deck. Checkmate, liberals. The truth is out there. Clearly, the only explanation for this is that it's rigged. I'll snap them back. Our hand's great for TVA. That's my favorite. When people leave a comment on a YouTube video and they're like, I, I loaded up this deck and I queued into a mirror match initially. There's deck-based matchmaking. It's like, really, bud? You're leaving that comment on a video that has 10,000 views on it? And you're, you're confused how the, the deck video where you got your deck from that has 10,000 views on it got you a mirror match? You think it being rigged is the answer? Okay. Okay, gamer. The hiff. You don't understand, Jeff. I am a special. I am a special boy, Jeff. Only I could possibly have thought to download this deck. Am I gonna try and contest the center? I think no. I think it's just this, and then I could do these two plus cloak next turn. Oh God. Why is she- why is she such a big lady? I played it was miles yeah yeah she lights him up oh that's actually a good idea yeah what if I just get rid of the TVA I'm actually kind of down down for that because they might be retreating later now nah, they're never retreating I right, will fist nocturne. Psych! We'll continue playing. a spicy one inside a move. I like that. I would talk about how we needed something to help mitigate location variance in this deck. Which is simply a reasonable tool for doing that. Are we dead to Heimdall? We're dead to Heimdall.
Nocturne rolls nowhere. Move Nocturne right and get Nexus again. <laughs> oh! Hercules hits him out. We don't lose to Heimdall. No, uh, they could just Heimdall left, right? No, we do lose to them just playing the Heimdall on the left. I really don't want to play a move mirror, so I'm just going to go ahead and play my cards out and hope the best. Watch the opponent run down the entire rope and then just, like, play Heimdall as their only card. They could have a tech card like Shang-Chi here, too. Oh my god, did they lose because they Heimdall middle? Oh my god, they missed the Hercules. They missed the Hercules! Oh, baby! Oh, baby! I appreciate the opponent's commitment to the Heimdall lose the game bit. That's that's. Dedication to the move archetype right there. And a dedication to the move archetype. I'm to lose the game. The whole, the whole rope to make the play that loses the game. Video gamers. Good choices, not even once. To be fair, Hercules has never been played in a gold conquest before. Harsh, but fair. done with this deck by the next ad break but we've managed to be 2-0 in this gold conquest and it feels like it would be unfair to it to not let it try and play the last match so i'm gonna tap the ads button in 120 seconds we'll be back to see if we can close out an infinite ticket with this and then regardless of the result of this game we'll play in a new deck afterwards thanks everybody for hanging out don't go anywhere i run to the restroom subscribers be
When you think of Hercules as martyr insurance, I think playing one mediocre card to try and make your other mediocre card slightly better is generally speaking not good deck building. I think if you want to try and play Martyr in a deck where you're not actively filling the board, you're better off playing something like Captain Marvel rather than Hercules. But the content. Won't somebody please think of the content? I like playing Nico on 2x mode on turn one and bounce decks. I mean, you'll be a uh, 1 4 0 4 for later. Sounds great. Jared Ferguson, thanks for re upping that primer. Appreciate the, uh, the 14 months. Welcome back. So, unfortunately. Uh, I believe this is still bugged, and if I Falcon or Beast here, I actually don't get the extra power on her, which is really disappointing. Playing Nebula in Castle Blackstone seems not great. Because I'm encouraged to play here because it's Castle Blackstone. But I'm also encouraged to play here because Nebula. Oh, snap. A snap on the cloak draw, I think. Looks like Gilga stuff. I do need to be concerned about. I do need to be concerned about Shadow King in this matchup, is noteworthy. Such a good, a good Nico roll, holy. Do I want to keep them honest on the right? I'm not sure that I do. Or on the left, I'm not sure that I do. I think they're pretty likely to play into there regardless. Yeah, they keep it their Gilgamesh. They move Gilgamesh center, they go to 30 there. If I move dagger center, 
I go to 21 plus 6 is 27. I need to put another 4 there, and then we can put a cheap da a big dagger over here. Yeah, I mean, if they move if they move Gilgamesh, we can deterministically beat that, yeah? Dagger does scale to be quite large, yeah. Yeah, if we can dodge... A, a big question we need to try and figure out in this matchup is does my opponent have... Um, does my opponent have uh, Shadow King in their deck? Ideally, we find the answer to that without losing a bunch of cubes. Can I snap here on them doing nothing? Do we think they leave? I'm gonna snap on them doing nothing. It might be a free cube. Bar's definitely better for them than us, but they haven't done anything so far. Oh, order for spider. Yeah, that's a good call, actually. Hundred percent should on the other order. I appreciate that call out. I don't play the human torch out, I brick a draw, which I don't want to do. There's probably like a blue marble on the left and then I have to leave. Question. When it comes to normal bouts, I'm pretty comfortable playing Beast on turn 5 since his new text is only one turn, and I typically play it with Hit Monkey. But with bounce move decks, I find it a bit more difficult to figure out when I should play my Beast since it's more flexible. Any advice that I identify when it's best to play him out? I think that really depends. The answer to that question really depends on the matchup that you're playing, and more specifically, if you are playing around tech cards or not. So, Be Beast is your best tool in any bounce deck for blanking tech cards by trying to duck priority. So against tech cards, saving it for turn five is often still correct to, try to manipulate that to the best of your ability. But obviously asterisk, different situations apply, etc., etc. What do we think of copying Beast?
want to, I don't know that I want a second one of those, but we're definitely going to murder the crap out of this. This cuts me off a draw, but is that unacceptable? Do I need another Electra? Oh, I guess if I don't play the Electra, I don't double the Nico because of the bug. Yeah, I think it's just Beception here. You want a falcon instead of beast? I think I like beasting the beast. God, I wish I would have, I wish I would have contested the left tier and not Beast who would have crushed this. I probably should have read that on the stat that this is what they were doing. Definitely could have killed that Call Obsidian. For the people saying I should have played around Kairi on their Nebula in turn two, you're being super results based. Like, I can very easily just, like, play into the Nebula path basically every turn. So, like, the downside to them having their 50 percenter here is, like, they get a two-power thing, which is, like, not that big of a deal. So, like, it's a, it's a minimal downside, and, like, making my sequencing to play around something that ends up being a minimal downside is, like, not, not a great choice. I didn't have to struggle through that. Nico, Nico was actually just insane that game. Like, I don't, I don't know. We were going to figure it out probably, but I'm so glad I don't have to.
Uh, for the people who have been asking why I'm not playing uh, Doctor Strange in this deck, my cloak has a gold background split with blue Kirby Crackle. So uh, Ben Brode would actually throw me in jail if I refused to play it. What do we think of this and then next turns like Fist Dagger Beast? I want the Vulture to go center because I don't think I want to beast it. This does mean I do a good job of ducking priority, which is nice though. Putting the Hercules on the right was wrong. I should have put him here or here. No, I don't know I'm gonna be able to trigger him again this game. We're in an okay spot. We're eight to four, so I'm gonna bully. Or I grew probably a little bit favored here. We talked about ducking Shadow King, this does that. Okay, so their Mockingbird currently costs two. Their Gilgamesh is one, two, three, four, five, so he's 14. Dagger will be 15 in the middle, going to 17, meaning they'd have to fill everything to tie. We'd also tie just a blue marvel. We'd lose to blue marvel plus a one drop, though. I think I need to contest the middle. The question then becomes, do I... Like, do this. Just kind of keep him honest on both sides. I think I want to keep him honest on both sides. It's close, though. Maybe that, yeah? I'm so glad they added stats to this archetype. It's just, it's so much fun. And so, it's so satisfying to execute correctly.
This deck will have a terrible stance because of a steep learning curve. I mean, it'll also have terrible stance because it's probably not very good. <laughs> um, let's talk about some conclusions after playing that are things, things that I feel certain of and things that I'm less certain of and things to try. First and foremost, this is something some of you are not going to want to hear, but I'm sorry it's the truth. I, I don't think Nocturne is optional if you want to play move. And it's not because she's a card that moves. Her moving doesn't really have synergy with anything else that you're doing. Nocturne is important for this deck because this deck's worst matchup is Ben Brood. One of the reasons why move as an archetype has always struggled is because of location variance. And Nocturne mitigates location variance that no other card can mitigate. She gets you into Sanctum Sanctorums and Crimson Cosmoses. She gets you into all sorts of things. And she's also meaningful counterplay against decks playing Limbo, which are gonna otherwise be hard matchups for you. There was some talk during that set about Cloak versus Doctor Strange. And one thing that I think is really worthwhile to note about Cloak is that Hercules makes Cloak better because one of the downsides Cloak has compared to other move cards is he encourages you to put all your movers into the same spot. And with Hercules, you could go Hercules, Cloak the Hercules path, and then slide Dagger and Vulture, or Vulture and Torch, or Torch and Dagger, and move both of them to the same Cloak path, but then Herc kicks one back out. So you get to double leverage Cloak, but not also end up with all your eggs in the same location. I think I think that's a big deal. Um, Nico's pretty good this deck. She was just like punched, punched the clock in multiple spots. Um, that being said, I think the two slots I would play with in here is Cloak and Miles are probably the slots. I think you definitely should try Strange. I think there's upside to Cloak, to Strange, and Strange to Cloak. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's a six in one hand, half dozen in the other, one's better in some spots and others better in others. But I think it's definitely worth testing this card in the Cloak slot. And honestly, it could maybe even be that maybe Miles doesn't do enough for you and you just like want another enabler and you play them both is the answer. I can see that being reasonable too. You could also probably feasibly put a tech card in like Miles' slot as a flex slot. Like Luke Cage, for example, could be good to protect you from Shadow Kings. Because he's one you have a hard time, you have a hard time playing around. Someone said, could you play Legion over Nocturne? Legion is probably the closest thing to a Nocturne replacement that you're going to have. But he's also problematic, right? Like, he's not going to get you into places early. He takes all of your energy on turn five. Taking all of your energy on turn five means you're not beasting or falconing that turn, which makes it harder to play around tech cards by throwing priority. So... I think, I think Legion is the closest to what you could play if you don't have Nocturne, but I also think he's a lot worse for all those reasons. 